Hello, minions. Uh, welcome to another episode of me talking about stuff. Uh, today's another jewelry tutorial, and I'm going to go over a few things about using seed beads and the threads and needles you might need in order to use them. There are a lot of things out there on the market, so I'm just going to basically go over the few pieces that I tend to work with because I don't like buying a lot of things that I'm really not going to use ultimately at the end. So, I'm going to use this basically as a guide to help you guys pick, make the right decisions. I'm going to go over the threads first. I'm going to just go over three of my favorites. Um, my absolute, absolute favorite is Fireline, which um, is basically a fishing line. It is a basically a bonded thread made of three strands of uh, synthetic material fused together. Um, it is pretty much one of the most fundamental bits of threads you can purchase. The probably biggest disadvantage of it is its price. It is one of the more expensive threads out there and I was completely hesitant at first to purchase it, but once I did, and, uh, I was thoroughly impressed with it. Um, it has a bit of a memory. It's really nice to work with. It doesn't shred as much. Um, it also doesn't really tend to... It does kink a little bit, but it does, it's very hard for me to be able to knot it when I don't want it to knot. So this is pretty much the one that I would recommend the most. The only disadvantage that I can find is that it only comes in two colors. In crystal and in smoke, which is okay. But when you're using a lot of the transparent seed beads, it tends to show a lot. The one I'm showing here is crystal, but you can see it's not very crystal. It's uh, white, kind of. The next one I'm going to recommend is Nymo. It's a nylon thread. Um, I got this giant freaking spool of it for about 15 bucks, so it's very cost effective. The problem is... I have with it is it shreds easily and I'm constantly uh, unknotting it. It ravels within itself at times. Um, you definitely have to have a thread conditioner which is what I'm going to talk about later. Um, one good thing about it is that it comes in a huge selection of colors and weights so if you're using the transparent seed beads um, you can find any one easily that will match, uh, match your beads quickly. Or effectively, that's a better word for it. Um, it comes in a series of weights, which is kind of arbitrary. They have double O, which is the finest or the lightest, and they have D, which is the heaviest, and it also has sizes B and O, which are more of a somewhat in the middle. Um, this one is D weight. I tend to use the heaviest with my stringing because I am very paranoid about durability. And, well, this one hasn't really failed me in terms of... Uh, Durability, it's just when I'm working with the same thread over and over and I pick too many um, or pick too long of a thread, it uh, the friction of the beads will get to the, th the thread and weaken it and that's where you get the shredding and the um, unpleasantness. Another brand, and the third one, I've only used very briefly, but I really like it uh, compared to Nymo. Um, it's a little bit more expensive than Imo, and it comes in a smaller quantity, but it is called Sono. It is a Japanese-based thread, or made in Japan. Um, and it's got a little bit more of a rigid, um, memory to it. And I notice it doesn't really knot a lot when uh, I'm working with it. Uh, I do wax it anyway when I'm using it. A lot of people, some, I'm getting, I ask other people and I get 50-50 opinions about it. Um, some people wax it, some people don't, but I notice it doesn't kink as easily. And um, it doesn't shred as often. Like, you can get a lot more mileage with it before it starts shredding and uh, weakening. Uh, but, I mean, it's a thread, it's a fiber-based thread, so it's going to do that no matter what you do. Um, the only disadvantages I find with this one is that it's a little harder to find, um, except for specialty bead shops, um, and there isn't as much of a choice in colors, but it has a lot more choices than uh, Fireline. You got like the browns and the taupes and a few grays I think in there as well, but nothing bright and vibrant like you'll find in Nymo. 
Uh, whichever you choose is pretty much a matter of opinion. Oh, one thing I did want to mention about Fireline. Um, you probably shouldn't use good scissors when cutting it. Uh, or good cutting tools like pliers or what have you. Um, just don't use your expensive ones. It'll dull the blade really quickly. All you need to cut these things out is a cheap 50 cent pair of nail clippers. And that's all you need. Alright, now the next thing I wanted to talk about is a little bit about needles and picking one that you would prefer. Um, this one is entirely a personal preference and it's going to take a bit of experimentation to find out what you're comfortable with and what your wrists and fingers can handle without cramping. Um, I'll start with my favorite and the one I use the most. It's the Lance brand. They are uh, English beading needles. They come in a little black packet with a knight in the front of it. And um, this is a size 10 needle. I like them because they are thinner and they're longer so it's good for my big hands. Um, but as you can kind of see after a while they kind of kink and get look really really beaten up. Um, this is actually a better example of the warping. I'm kind of rough on my needles and I bend them a lot. Uh, but these are pretty good. I like the length of them. I like the width of the actual needles. They're, again, Lance brand. Um, then I have another example here, which resembles actually more of a sewing needle rather than a beading needle, but they are made by Beadsmith. Um, they are size 10 sharps, which are a little shorter. Um, I don't like them because they are too short for my bigger hands, and my hands end up cramping quickly. Um, but they're not bad. Again, it's a matter of personal preference. Okay, now the next needle I want to talk about is good for people who really don't like threading needles. Um, this is basic. This is called a big eye needle, and it is basically a giant eye with two pointy bits. Um, that isn't actually an open form, so I can show you what it looks like, but this is what it looks like without it being pried open nicely. It's good. Um, it does tend to shred the thread a little bit more at the corners when you have the eye, um, because basically what it is is two pieces of wire that have been uh, stuck together and fused and pointed, which is another disadvantage of that. This is double-ended, so if you're going to use one of these, be very careful, because I have stabbed myself multiple times because of it at the same time. Um, but that one is pretty interesting to use. Um, I don't mind it, but it's the double-ended part that kind of put me out of uh, using them. Okay, and the last needle I wanted to show you is the uh, twisted wire needle, which is basically, like it kind of says, it's a piece of wire that's been bent in half and twisted together to form a nice needle. This one uh, comes in the various uh, weights. This one is obviously a light one, which was my mistake to purchase because it's not showing very well. But you can see over here is the eye. Uh, it's a nice little uniform loop. And the wire twists down all the way down. Um, I usually cut them to the length that I, ne I uh, need. These are commonly used for pearl knotting and stuff like that, so it doesn't really wreck the inside of the pearl too much. Um, but what I also recommend this one to use is with monofilament which is the basically the plasticky clear fishing line that is uh, rigid for making nice rigid pieces like I will show you. This is a set of earrings that I made using monofilament. Nice and shiny and sparkly and they are basically a solid cube um, but this needle is handy because um, eventually the monofilament will you will need a needle in a monofilament if you have too many threads coming in there because the weight of the thread is too wide for the beads. Um, I would recommend this one because any other needles that you would use will sh break the uh, plastic in half and just snap the thread in half and shred it after uh, too much use and friction. Um, but this one doesn't have as much tension inside the uh, needle and I found that this one I can actually use when it comes to go passing through beads too many times. Alright, now I'm going to show you a few more tools and thingies that you might find useful in your seed bead adventures. 
Uh, most importantly is probably the thread conditioner or beeswax that you would use in order to uh, condition your threads with so the fibers don't shred and uh, get nasty and broken immediately after you thread your needle through the hole. But yeah, basically all it's simple. You just take your thread and push it up against a groove like that and pull through. It'll cut into the beeswax a little bit, but and just kind of the warmth and the friction will absorb the beeswax on your thread. Uh, there's also another brand called Thread Heaven. I'm not sure. I think it's more of a beeswax based thing, but um, yeah, I wouldn't recommend using anything else because I might eat the uh, threads, fibers. Um, another thing that is nice to have after, like, especially with bead mats, bead mats are very handy with seed beads because of the way the, uh, the fabric is. It basically makes your beads pop up so it's easier to pick up on a needle rather than using a completely flat surface. I can show you. They almost levitate on top of the, um, on top of the mat, but you can spread your designs out easily. Um, I'd also recommend getting a couple of scoops to make cleanup a little bit easier. Uh, these come in a variety of shapes. Um, these ones I kind of got as free gifts from um, purchasing at stores, but just a sorting tray makes it easier to pick up. Um, that's another shape. It's covered in resin, unfortunately, because that's what I use to mix stuff sometimes because I'm a boss. Um, yeah. And then there's this form, which is good for the scoop, but I'm not really... It's a scoop-tweezer combo, which I really have yet to find a use for these tweezers, because uh, there's literally no friction or... Uh, what's the word for it? Torque, I think? Yeah. I'll figure that out later. And probably hear about it later. But yeah, these tweezers are absolutely useless. This scoop is absolutely nice. So, very good for picking up seed beads. And the last thing, this one is a little gimmicky, but it's interesting to use, especially when you've got pieces that are already finished and you've spent hours completely racking your brains out finishing and putting your blood, sweat, and tears in. But, it's called a thread burner. Is basically the same cauterizing tool that they use in uh, hospitals to patch up stitches. Um, yeah, only use this with a synthetic fiber because the synthetic fiber will melt. Any natural fibers like cotton or thing like that will ignite. So don't do that. That's not fun. Um, using this is simple. It comes with a cap so that it makes things not push the button. But basically. You take your end of thread. Um, over time, you'll find that some of your pieces will have little threads sticking out in places that they really shouldn't be sticking out, but this is a really quick solution instead of having to restitch the entire thing and tear it up all over. But basically, push the button, and you can see a little poof of smoke, and the little dot melts. Whew. And stinks a little bit. That'll go away. It smells like burnt hair which is not always a pleasant smell. As you can see as I go along, just goes poof, 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 poof. Kind of forms a little ball and bead and it will fuse to the piece so it doesn't uh, unravel any further. It's a good saver for, um, again, it's a saver for one of your big pieces that you really just don't want to throw away or don't want to restring and tear out all over again because it took you a long time to do that and you should keep it as long as you can. But like I said, it's gimmicky. It's about 12 to 20 bucks, depending on where you buy it. Um, this one's branded a thread zap by the beadsmith. Again, not really a requirement. I basically just bought it for this demo because I haven't really needed to use it. Um, I wouldn't recommend that with Fireline because I don't think it would work well. Or we could experiment. Why not? Let's have a little fun. Fire is always nice for uh, people to see, right? Alright, so I have a bit of fire line, and yeah, that one actually works quite nice. 
it does burn a little quickly. And it does tend to be, yeah, it's fused plastic, basically. So yeah, well, there you have it. It'll work to get rid of the little nasty threads that, uh, flyaways that will, um, happen upon your pieces after wear and tear. But completely natural and nothing to worry about. That's about all I have for seed bead introduction type things. I hope you guys have fun on your adventures, and feel free to email me if you got any questions. Um, be sure to check out my website at www.odinsbeadall.com, and I hope to see you again in more of my adventures.